Hey Scorpios, how y'all doing? Welcome, we're gonna be doing your first half of July general reading. So, your meditation. I saw J.R.R. Tolkien, yes I did. I saw an image of a dragon, you don't say. And then I saw this the words, it's not reinventing the wheel, it's revealing the wheel. It's not reinventing the wheel, it's revealing the wheel. You know, uh, J.R.R. Tolkien, you know, author of The Hobbit, Lord of the Rings, you know, all the goods. He, you know, invented an entire language. <laughs> um, you know, within his own literature, he was a linguist. He was absolutely enamored with language. Um, you know, his genius uh, was very specific to him. It will never be recreated. Because like I said, he actually invented a whole language for fun. <laughs> like for fun. <laughs> Put it into this book. So, you know, this image that I saw of the dragon as well. The dragon, again, is about seeing yourself and others really clearly having, it's against that black egg energy of just being so connected to what makes you inherently you and understanding that that's where the true gold of it is. There's this, you know, um, human tendency to look outside of ourselves for creative inspiration, right? It's like an old trope. It's like someone, you know, a writer has writer's block and then, you know, cue the montage of them taking a walk through the park or like, you know, like looking through books for inspiration or going to an art gallery. Like it's, you know, it's, it's a trope for a reason. And I get this very distinct feeling because I, I saw the dragon, you guys, um, you know, being repped by the dragon as a Scorpio collective going inside of yourself. And I actually saw the Scorpio Collective, it was it was kind of cheeky in a fun way, getting on an elevator and going down, down, down into the lower world. Now the lower world in shamanic terms um, basically represents our shadow aspects of ourself, the darker aspects of ourself that are not, you know, as readily visible, available, or discernible, right? And I saw you guys doing that, but doing it consciously um, and I want to say comfortably, although I want to be careful about how I use the word comfortable, um, but it, it really feels like you are, again, it's not reinventing the wheel, it's revealing the wheel. What is your wheel? What does it look like? There's a point of purpose, focus, messaging, artwork, point of perspective that is so individual to you that I feel like there's an opportunity here within your energy where I see you guys really uh, having an aha or a series of aha moments about what that is and what it looks like and then keeping it to yourself while you build on it. And that was something that came through in a big way was um, you know having this idea, getting very clear about something or having an idea for something or, or feeling like suddenly you're very clear on your next best steps. But instead of going around and asking others for their you know opinion or advice or you know whatever have you, um, you're keeping it to yourself and letting it build and brew. And I see you, <laughs> I see, okay, this, I'm so obsessed. Um, and instead, you know, it, it's, it's, it's letting it build, but it's also like, look at it this way. And I know as Scorpios, you're gonna be able to relate to this. This is something that um, Scorpios and Aquarius, uh, Aquarians have in common as well. I'm an Aquarius with the Scorpio moon, where Scorpios are very, uh, they are private. And I feel like they, you, you know, y'all get accused of being secretive a lot, but it, it's not, that's a, you know, a misunderstanding. It's that you're private, right? And I feel like there is such momentum in your privacy. That's what it is. I know how that's, it's like, what? Momentum in the privacy? But, but that's what it feels like. There's momentum in the privacy. When you get an idea around something or you start to build on something or you, or, or you have a point of focus that's new and exciting and precious to you, when you expose it prematurely to the energy, even if they're well-meaning people around you, once you expose it to their energy, suddenly it dilutes it sometimes. If you do it prematurely, it can dilute it. Whereas if you hold on to it, and wait and sit with it and let it gestate and build and grow into a further place where it gets to a, a place of uh, development where you're like, okay, now it's time to share the work. Now it's time to expose the idea. Now it's time to reveal the wheel, as it were. 
then that's the ticket. Then it's the time for collaboration with people's others' opinions or, or their, their um, objective eye coming in to, to read over your work or look at your work or listen to your idea or your point of view or whatever have you. But but that's what it feels. Give this idea a point of focus or whatever this new, and even if this is a new relationship even, y'all. This could be a new work line of work, new relationship. Because we got Hummingbird here, obsessed, which speaks of all the good things. Let it just stay. Keep it private and to yourself. And just long enough to where you you feel like it it, it is not, um, you know, a little baby bird that you are releasing out of the nest a bit too early. Okay, there's something to that revealing the wheel. So <laughs> the hummingbird. I oh, this is about the sweetness of life. This is air energy, and I really like this. You know, this speaks of a certain rapid movement. Um, I don't know the number figure of how many times in a minute a hummingbird beats its wings, but it's a lot. Okay. Um, this is about the nectar. This is about happy romance. This is having a lightness of being. This is about, con listen, sometimes we can kind of work through things, shadow work, life circumstances, quick changes, and find that, you know, we do that long enough, right? And it's a process where we wake up and, or we get to a point where we're like, oh, I feel lighter now. I worked through stuff. I didn't rush the process and I'm lighter now. And that's wonderful, right? We, we are light enough to fly, you know, fly up and be light and, and really embrace the sweetness of life. Other times though, sometimes we really have to make a conscious choice to go, I, in, in whatever way this resonates, right? Whether it's like a cord cutting ritual you do in meditation, whether you journal about it and then burn the pieces, whether you, whatever this is for you, right? But sometimes we consciously have to go, I am releasing what is heavy because it is not serving me and I am not here to live in a place of weight, right? And I mean that energetically, right? But I, I think that's also um, relevant to other aspects of your life as well. What aspects, I feel like you're being called to ask yourself too, because if a wheel is weighted, it won't turn, um, you know, functionally at, at its highest and fullest function, right? And see this circle here? What in your life is weighted? What can be released so that the wheel can be revealed in turn, right? Hummingbird, this is such a beautiful energy. This is also creative energy. Again, embracing the sweetness of life, releasing what is weighted, right? Beautiful, I love, this is such a happy energy. And it also bodes well for uh, romantic relationships too, like I said. Hmm. Interesting. Do you see how um, at the throat area, this hummingbird, it's it's red? So the red is the color of the root chakra. I'm being called to talk about that. The, the, some of you guys, I'm, I'm being told to take this literally. Uh, some of you guys, because your root chakra is what governs your money, your stability, right? Your foundation, your work. Some of you guys, your voice is your meal ticket. Your voice, what you have to say. Um, your words, your perspective, your communication, that's where the money is, that's where the prize is, that's where the wheel is, okay? All right. Just like Tolkien, right? Oh, lordy, lordy, lord. You don't say six of wands, work it out. Six of wands, stop it. Don't, don't stop. This is really good. You know, six of wands, wands uh, is about the soul. <laughs> You don't say. Wands rule the realm of the soul. Please say that six times fast. Wands rule the realm of the soul. Okay, I did that. Okay. You know, this is about victory, but this is public appearances. This is this is outward public victory. This is being seen and approached and can I have your autograph and, you know, can I have my picture made with you and all of that. So this can be internal victory that manifests in an outward reality it can also be an outward external victory that gives you all the good inside feel feels either way this is success you know to a degree that people know your name people are aware of you you are you know you have a specific footprint right why do i want to say you're contributing though like it feels like a contribution um, as opposed to uh, just a passion project or just something that, you know, you, you're using your talents wisely. It feels, I, I keep wanting to say it, it feels like you're contributing. It's like you're leaving your piece of the world better than how you found it. I feel like the way into this or what this involves may surprise some of you guys. It might even come when you're, okay, fine. 
you know, this hummingbird energy, it's like stop and smell the flowers. This really might hit you. And, and, I, and I know this is going to sound funny. I want to say like hit you like a ton of breaks. You're like, oh my God, it was here all along. This one thing that I do in my off time. This is the way I want to communicate this. Just like Tolkien, how he took this whole invented language. He didn't invent that for Lord of the Rings. He invented that for fun. And then when he was writing Lord of the Rings, he was like, oh my God, like, oh my God, this language, like it's for, it's, it's for the elves. It's for the, you know what I mean? So I, that's what it feels like, right? Something that you've already cultivated, you're already good at it, that you're already, that you just haven't thought to really incorporate in this new way. It's something like that. But I want to say instead of hit you like a ton of breaks, it hits you like a ton of balloons, right? That's what it feels like. Okay, I can't. I can't, but I will. I can't, but I will. Four of Wands. Scorpios, work it out. Four of Wands. This is 11-11. This is happy home and family. This is marriage, celebration, union, synchronicity. The, the home life being on lock. This is beautiful. Are you, did you just get the Six of Wands to the Four of Wands? Did that just happen? Did I not tell you this is a light, lightness of being? Did I not say this is about stopping and smelling the what? The flowers or the flower garland, if you will. What's that? Apples. Origin point. Okay. Apples and origin point. Yeah, I, I do because they're taking me to... Yeah. Some of you guys, it might behoove or behoof you, sorry, I had to do it. Um, it might behoove you to go back to your origin point. Okay, whatever that origin point is for you. So, some of you guys might be childhood origin points. Some of you guys, um, it might be a different origin point. When you started a certain line of work, when you started dating a certain person, when you started whatever this was. Um, go back to that origin point. There's a lot of information in that for you, okay? I do feel like there's some happy changes um, in your home life. You could be renovating, uh, adding something to your home. Uh, what is that, a house extension? When you um, making it bigger, improving upon it. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of happy, fun energy. I, I feel it around the homestead. I do. Um, gardening, even animals coming to visit. You might be seeing a lot of animals in the form of, or synchronicities in the form of animals, animal visitations, okay? And it's interesting too. Oh, start at the bottom. Hey, Aquarius energy, wish fulfillment, being in the spotlight, just like uh, similar to the, the Six of Wands, actually. Um, it's interesting. I, Four of Wands is also, just like I said, how the hummingbird is uh, romantically uh, keyed in there, and, and it, it bodes very well for romantic partnerships, especially those of you being called to say, this can be work partnerships because sometimes you have a work wife or a work husband who you work, you know what I mean? Um, but also romantic, uh, close ties. Anyone that you're really close with and that you have an emotional connection with, I'm even hearing a telepathic connection with. Um, if things have been a bit heavy there, a little bit weighted, you've been feeling a little more disconnected or you've, or you've just been finding that there's a lot of weight going on around other things that, that um, maybe the light and romance and the play I'm hearing um, has been lost or taken a pause, I feel like that's coming back in a really beautiful way. I'm getting this image of someone who's been working really hard or carrying the weight of the world on their shoulders and then they're able to come in and just like by going inside, by getting in the elevator and going down and keeping a lot of this um, work idea realization to themselves and letting it just stay privately they're able to turn around and give some of that reserve, some of those reserves of energy, or reserves of energy rather, um, back to their partner. Um, and that's really beautiful because look, look at this two of wands. Did you just get three wands? Passion, desire, artistry. It's the suit of the artist and the communicator. Well, swords deal with communication, but the wands are someone who communicates for a living or communicates publicly. Oh, remember the humming? Oh, I just got shivers. The hummingbird with the red throat. Okay. Because remember, it's the cut, the root chakra is at the throat. So it's like your money, your idea, something that's it, it, the, really the gold is, is um, in the communication or the something around that. Whew. Look at how they're holding this world together and making decisions together. This is why I'm saying like the six to the four to the two. This is really beautiful. You're coming back to one, meaning each other, right? But this is really stunning. This is, this is, you know, building that blueprint, getting really clear. I feel like you, you and someone else, right? Whether this is work or, or romantic or whatever have you, are coming together and going, and this could even be a trusted mentor I'm getting for some of you. Uh, Cause they're showing me Tolkien's professor 
um, I believe at Oxford. It could be, I think it was Oxford. Anyway, I feel like you're coming together with someone going, okay, new earth, new world, new slate, new reality. What now? What's next? What do we want now? Let's reframe. Let's revisit. I'm seeing someone making vows at a wedding. Um, and then come in this energy here is like, let's revisit our wedding vows. Someone could be having an anniversary on that too, but let's, let's revisit our wedding vows. Let's rewatch our wedding video. Let's go back to our initial partnership agreement in this line of work and look over what our mission statement for the company was. There's something about revisiting that. And it could be for you personally, you could find a, um, a bucket list or a, a new moon manifestation list from years ago, and you're going back to look at it. There's something about revisiting that, rechecking the blueprint in order to inform it, because the next step after this is the three of wands, which is taking active movement forward towards that, you know, new inspiration and direction. Hi, the sun, Scorpio, the sun, hummingbird flowers and love and oh how did i almost just miss that though do you remember when i said that it's revealing the wheel not reinventing it and then we have the wheel right here pay attention to detail <laughs> oh lord okay so the sun is illumination the warmth truth truthful communication getting very true truthful with yourself right? About what's working and what is not. And I do feel like for some of you guys, yes, this is absolutely about your relationship to yourself because I, I'm feeling an inner child thing here as well. Um, also, I do feel like this is your time in the sun moving into a place of where a lot of people are recognizing you and you're taking, you're stepping into a new position of authority, leadership, or influence. Okay. I just saw someone's social media following, um, increasing. Four of Wands. <laughs> Queen of Cups, y'all. Hey. So, yes, yeah, showing up in your own reading. This is beautiful. You know, the Queen of Cups, this is very much, you know, the water rules the realm of, of emotion and intuition. The fact that it's clarifying the Four of Wands, I, I remember when I said that there was a partnership, whether it be work or personal, whatever have you, relationship to home. You know, the, the Queen is very very tuned in. She's the most intuitive queen that there is. And I really like how this is complimenting this because you are making decisions. You are feeling in alignment with your emotions. Cause see how this is balanced, this 1111, right? And see how she's these two aspects of, what is that? A, like a goblet? Uh -huh. Each aspect of this and see how these little crab legs and, and this has to do with home and crabs represent home and we're in cancer season, which is the crab. Interesting, no? I do feel like there's this energy of feeling balanced within your emotions. I do feel like there's been some, uh, for some of you, some swinging back and forth around that. Um, or some, you know, it's taken a moment. You've had days where you feel a little up, days when you feel a bit down. It's been a bit uh, pendulum-esque. Um, but, but, oh, weird. They're reminding me. Okay, I very rarely remember previous readings, but they're reminding me this. It's really cool. Do you remember in the last reading that I did for y'all where I channeled um, that river and your advice was to be the river as opposed to the tree? I think that was it. Ooh. Be the river as opposed to the tree. She is sitting by a very calm and still yet active river. You got there. Because look at the, the these are kind of, you know, wands in the ground. These are trees. We're looking at trees in the river. I mean, this is really cool. You're, you've successfully gotten to a place where you're feeling balanced and you're allowing your, because remember, and you guys know this. Your emotions are the gas that fuels your intuition. So if your emotions are askew, so will be your intuition. And your intuition is your greatest asset. Do you see this owl here? Can you see that? Ooh. Oh, I'm in a new location, by the way. <laughs> Just to state the obvious. So we got a we got a new set going on here. Fun. Um, the lighting's a bit different, but we're rolling with it, living for it. Um, yeah, so this owl here, which is about clear seeing, Athena energy, um, clear perception. You know, oh, interesting. Remember when I saw you on the elevator going down and into the darker depths and hidden depths and keeping a lot of that stuff to yourself until it gestated properly before exposing it um, to other energies, opinions, or whatever have you? Um, the owl also, you know, in Ted Andrews' Animal Speak book, he says that, you know, oh, the sun. Oh, man, it's so weird. 
Um, the sun lives through the owl at night, which means they see just as clearly at night as they do during the day, right? That's a misconception. Some people, you know, think that the owls only can really see well at night, but not during, that's not true. It's that when they see at night, it's like they hold within them, they carry over the energy of the sun into the nighttime. So it might as well be daytime for them. That's how well they see in the darkness. So I feel like that's really pertinent for y'all as well. Do you see how this lady's holding this little baby on the back? There's something to do with inner child work, or um, you might even be considering having a family or your thoughts or relationship to family. Okay, you can't make this up. You couldn't see this because it was just off camera. Look at what just fell out into my lap when I'm talking about family, relationship to family. The Empress, pregnancy, children, swan, which is romantic love and partnership, stars, wish fulfillment. This is the fertile mother. That, okay, I feel like that wants to go there. That's fascinating to me because the fact that the empress just fell out like that and that it's clarifying the two of wands. We were talking about planning with partnership and all of that. Some of this may surprise you. I do feel like some of you guys maybe had plans to, um, have a family way down the road or, or you know, hadn't really considered rethinking your relationship to family or even family that you'd fallen out with. You might feel the need or desire to reconnect with right now. Um, it, it's, it's interesting because if you look at it, oh my, guys, you cannot make this up. I, okay, I can't with this. I, I can't with this. Okay. I took this 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 winged messenger oracle deck and I brought it over here to use and I look at the bottom, it's the hummingbird. Okay, back to this though and then we'll get there. I, I mean, this really does feel like these are that you're in a partnership with someone, whether this is, if it's work, you're considering the next best direction in terms of a work capacity because the Empress is giving birth to new life and conditions. If this is a romantic context, you are thinking about family or considering expanding your home life or taking steps towards, you know, what do we want our retirement to like? What do we want, you know, um, our version of a, of a rocking chair on a porch drinking sweet tea to be? Oh, I just let you into my mind a little bit there. <laughs> anyway, but but this is really beautiful. And see how, how she's looking outward. We're not seeing her, you know, facing front. She's looking outward. She's going, what's down that, that road and that path? What do we want? What do I want? Right? I'm not who I was before, right? Two to the three. I'm not who I was. So let's let's go back to this blueprint. Let's reassess, relook at things so that we can, you know, move ahead together in whatever contact, context and way that that is. Some of you guys may put your heads together and, and I feel like this could be for a few of you guys, right? Especially those of you who, um, this has to do with friendship or work. Some of you guys could be coming together and going, oh, we, we, we aren't who we were before. We want different things. Let's make some edits. Let's think about rearranging things. Well, let's really take stock, but it feels very positive with the hummingbird and the hummingbird. Uh, <laughs> Hello, release what you've been carrying and lighten up. New joy is on the way. Hello and goodbye. Guys, release what you've been carrying and lighten up. New joy is, I mean, I'm just re repeating myself at this point. Um, really, really beautiful here. This is up. And I like how this is shown here too, with the color green, which is the color of the heart chakra. Again, it's not reinventing the wheel. It's revealing the wheel something to that. Remember, the invention of the wheel changed civilization in a way, right? I want you to think about that. What is your wheel? What is your contribution? Something to think about. Okay, my beautiful Scorpios, this was on the level. This was that reading. I, I'm really excited for you guys, double hummingbird realness. Um, with that being said, I so hope that this helped and resonated. If so, please let me know in the comments below. I love reading through your comments the very most, so please do um, shout me out. Let me know what's going on. What's good? What you doing? And um, also just thank you so much for being here. I appreciate every single one of you. I really, really do. And most of all, and as always, thank you for being you and be well. Until next time.